Alright guys, I figured I'd make a quick video. I get a lot of questions. People ask, uh, what's the difference basically between these mega squirt systems? I know we throw around, I know on like the sloppy videos or on the sloppy page or basically anywhere we say MS1, MS2, MS3, MS3 Pro, uh, sometimes I say Micro 2, meaning Micro Squirt version 2, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, it's I think it's easiest to just show I have all of them at once here that I primarily use. It's fairly easy to show everything, I think, this way. I think everybody will get it a little bit easier. It's easier to grasp when you see everything. How I first started off with the cars is I don't have an MSD box, but we use an MSD ignition box that comes with a wiring harness that plugs into the crank and cam position sensor and it runs the ignition. The harness itself plugs into the ignition everything. All you have to do is get an MS1 box here and this is a short ass harness. This is just something I lay around to show you what an MS1 harness looks like. MS1 actually has a map sensor built in. Pretty neat. And then that's like a printer, almost like a 32 pin. I, th I think it's a 37 pin connector. You can't quote me on that. Then there's some LEDs and a 9 pin COM port on there. This is basically the ECU side. So you wire up this shit, you take the wire out of here, there's two wires in here, and for the life of me I always get it wrong, I think there's a white and a black, and you hook up the black wire, not the black wire, the white wire I think to the ignition, I always get it wrong, don't listen to me. This goes to the output on the MSD box, and then the MS1 sees tax signal, all this does is fire the injectors. So you wire up some pretty simple things, and all it does is it's just, I, hey, I fire the injectors. That's its job. It doesn't do anything else. The MSD box, you actually have to program separately. MSD box has a 9-pin and a wiring harness thing at the same time. It's nice if you're a beginner. You just plug the ignition stuff in, and you do a little bit of wiring since it's batch fire. Everything's done and ready to go. But what's nice is if you step up to, like, a micro squirt, it's actually a little bit cheaper, but you have to do more wiring. It's something you have to consider. You have to wire this yourself. Right now, Mike at EFI Source is actually going to make a plug and play harness for this. He just told me that. So that will be coming out. So you'll be able to buy the Micro Squirt already modded for LS engines and a harness, so obviously much prettier than this, that will plug right into your motor. And you can get your choice of tunes from him, like startup tunes that I have done for my cars, so you can at least start the car. And basically, how you get a micro squirt working is it comes with an 8 foot harness, you get this, you can get this modded from Mike already or you can modify it yourself, you have to open this up and put some resistors in for it to work correctly and this is the harness and this is how I relume them I have to trim this a little bit but this is power for everything and then this is for the ECU and something else back feeds in there for the crank position signal, this is all extra wire that I pulled out of the harness to make it easier for me to wire, I just back feed all the wires and then these are all junkyard connectors and you wire everything up and power everything and get all your signals working right what's nice is for a gen 3 motor you can hook this up and it uses crank position only, no cam position so you can put whatever cam, whether or not it has teeth on it or not you don't have to swap the front cover if you want to use like an LS3 style cam it's really cool but that's the whole micro squirt setup. That's it for the ECU. It's tiny as hell. It's nice. It's light. It weighs like... It feels like it's empty. It feels like a piece of shit, actually. The wiring harness is ten times heavier. So that's the difference between the MS1 and the micro squirt. The micro squirt, these both do batch fuel. This does... If you run this guy, because the MSD box does sequential spark. So this is batch fuel and sequential spark. And then this guy does batch fuel and waste spark. It only has four spark outputs, so it's firing two at the same time. And this has the map sensor built in, so you save on that two and a half bar. It can read 23 pounds. When you go to a micro squirt, you got two. I put three bars on. I get these from EFI Source, too. EFI Source three bar map. You can see the connector for it down in there. And then the best system he has right now is this MS3 based. Uh, he calls it the EFI Source Mega Squirt 3 for LS engines. We throw around words like we say MS3 Pro, which if you look up MS3 Pro, 
you're going to find DIY auto tune site where they have the two connectors in the top and it's different so it's it's bad habit of mine I guess that I say EFI source uh, MS3 Pro because it's nothing like MS3 Pro if you look it up but this is actually really nice it has USB right in it SD card for data logging it has two two plugs two 35 pin amp seals like this no more junky uh, printer cable there that thing sucks real bad what's nice is all the inputs and the outputs are separated so one is all inputs and one is all outputs so they don't cross talk and everything is really nice what's nice about this ECU is it's fully sequential spark and fuel what sucks about that is there's so much wiring you have to wire each injector and everything individually it's not batch fire so everything has to be wired right and if you're a beginner you gotta splice all that this is just a test harness that I was setting up to test this box for Mike and it works really good everything is working great we just have to throw it in something permanently maybe but it does run like I ran it on my truck everything works great it is nice this is also the box that I uploaded a video where I tuned Mike asked me to come to Barton's engine dyno and I tuned actually Bruce Bowling the guy one of the guys who started like the grandfather of B&G code for Megasquirt is Bruce that's Bowling and Grippo which means Bruce Bowling and I honestly don't know the other guy's first name but his last name's Grippo but they started uh, Megasquirt so that's pretty cool that I got to tune his LS2 so we have this tune available for download the stock LS2 tune for the EFI source sequential box really cool and then how you make all this work is this is I should explain this you guys are gonna be like what's that green board this is called a stimulator and for when you build MS1's see these all come pre-made with tiny little computers do all the work inside this box you actually solder together yourself out of a kit you can buy them assembled but you also assemble this and when you plug it in it simulates the sensors connected to a car like it says TPS IAT coolant O2 and RPM and what you can do is you can plug this in and you can see the injector outputs and other outputs on the ECU working while you input data so you turn the RPM up and down, the injectors flash faster and faster until they're basically a blur. It's nice, you can you can bench test with this and load firmware and confirm everything works. But basically what you gotta do is get all these connectors. If your motor, if you're not lucky enough over here, oh yeah here, this uh, I shouldn't waste time in this video but this is that motor we were scraping. <laughs> uh, I painted it. That should shock the shit out of a lot of you. Anyway, this, uh, when you get these out of the junkyard, you should cut all the connectors so you have everything. Uh, primarily, uh, here's a whole box full of connectors that I cut out. One thing you're going to want to do is look for like a, a V6 blazer. And right on the intake, this is the 3 bar MAF, Mass Airflow Sensor, MAF. And this is the inlet temp. There's the intake duct, and this comes down, and inlet air temp plugs in, and then this plugs in for the mass air meter. What's really cool is you can take this mass air meter plug, it's three prong, and you can use it for the crank position input on your LS Gen 3 motor. You don't have to find anything funny or find the crank position input. You can scavenge that from V6 uh, GM cars. And then that's the inlet temp. An easy way to remember, sorry, flipping this around so much, is focus, focus, anyway. Inlet temp has straight across. Can we get it? There we go. The pins are straight across on inlet temp. And I got a lot of shit in here. This is an inlet temp sensor from like a 3800 or a blazer. This is exposed. You can see. Plug that right in for IAT. And then this is what a throttle position sensor looks like got three plugs on it focus anyway there's three plugs on there usually blue tan and like a yellow gray color and then we cut these out of we use EV6 injector clips now it's focusing nice EV6 injector clips we cut these out of late model neons because the EV6 injectors the 80 pounders I buy are the cheapest so that's why we get EV6 connectors these are obviously the hardest ones to find. The uh, coil pack connectors out of trucks. Definitely need that shit. And then this is another. The oil pressure one sometimes too is a three plug. 
spare ADC. You can also use this as TPS. It just has different color collar. Sometimes it's TPS and it's different color collar. This one was TPS because the, the wires are the same. Let me find a coolant one for you. Here's a coolant one. That's the closed element coolant temp sensor. And then like I said, the do this one handed. Ugh. Nope. I'm not going to be able to. I don't want to put the camera down. So, we'll dig in here. See if I find something else. Oh yeah, here's a map sensor plug out of a car. Out of like a 3800 Buick. Not that hard to find. Here's another TPS. This one has a yellow collar on it. All different. It's for building harnesses. There's another cool and temp sensor. But anyway, you get the idea. You wire everything up here. Maybe one time I can show how I wire these. But that's basically it. You pick what you want to do. Uh, this is probably the easiest. That isn't so easy if you want. If you're good at wiring, this is a piece of cake. If you just follow the diagram or my walkthrough or anything, it's just uh, getting the lengths and everything the way you want. And then that's definitely going to be the hardest one to wire. But each one has better features like. Since this can do fuel and spark in the ECU, you get things like anti-lag, you can pull timing on the two-step, and you can build boost in a car if it has trouble foot braking. That's really nice. The MSD can two-step, but it's an ignition cut two-step, so it just it has a stutter box, so it just goes thud, 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 thud. It just pulls ignition, it just turns it off. Uh, that actually retards it and helps spool a turbo. Big difference from when I went from this to this on the 60 foots and being able to build power on just the foot brake, foot brake into the anti lag, and then this is ridiculous. You can tune if you have eight EGTs and eight wide bands, you can see like one cylinder is running a little leaner than the other. You can actually change the fuel trim and spark per cylinder. Ridiculous. You can data log SD card right on the ECU. You can flip a switch, or you can set it so that when you click the card in, it records. You can pull it out and it stops recording. And what Mike is doing also is He's basically making a micro squirt, a transmission controller for like a 4L80E. So you can get a micro squirt and then this, and then you can connect them together over the CAM bus wiring in here. And it can see vehicle speed and you can change boost by gear and all sorts of cool shit. Uh, lock up a converter from vehicle speed, all sorts of neat stuff. And then what he wants to do is when he gets the transmission controller working and finalized, he's going to put it in the back of this guy. He's going to change the connectors and everything and fit the transmission controller in here because there's a lot of empty space in here and he purposely did that to be able to fit the transmission controller in this box. So he wants to be able to do that this year I think. Get this box fully sequential with transmission control and everything out. That'll be sick. That'll be awesome. One box. Plug it in. Have full control over everything. Stand alone. And then this is more like budget for if you're going to race I would say. But it should, it'll work perfectly if you want a nice anti-lag and everything else. If it's your first setup and you want to keep everything simple, you plug in the whole MSD ignition box. It takes care of everything for you. And you just tune the fueling, which is extremely easy if you get the same injectors I do and you load a base tune. Uh, I know countless amount of people have gotten back to me and said, Yeah, I just I wired everything up. I put your tune in and fired it. And I went to the track and you know slammed it down the quarter and went 11s or 10s my first time, which is amazing to me that they didn't have to touch the tune. Uh, I wouldn't say do that and not check anything, but a lot of people have had great luck. I know one guy with a Fairmont and another guy with the Henry J. They're like, man, I just drive it. I don't even want to change anything. <laughs> but they, I mean, they definitely look at it and make sure everything's okay first. But I'm blown away sometimes when they tell me they didn't have to change anything. But I hope you guys understand a little bit more. Let me know if you have any more questions. I can go more in depth into certain things. Uh, once I get more set up here and we get some other stuff going, uh, I'm picking up my project car hopefully this weekend. I can update you guys on that, something new. But hopefully you all get a little bit better understanding of these three systems that I use here. And again, let me know if you have any questions and we can dive into one further. But that's all three. I hope you learned a lot.